Hi guys, Peter Finch here and welcome now to the Quest Golf Academy where we are doing the second video in our grip and wrist angle series on about how you can improve your golf by affecting the most important thing, the club face. So we've already done grip, we've already discussed about how strong and weak grips can affect club face and what you will be seeing if you use a strong or a weak grip. But what we're going to talk about now is how you can alter your wrist angles throughout the golf swing. So wrist angles are a very interesting part of the golf swing because even if you have a strong or a weak grip that we've already discussed about, how you alter your wrist angles throughout the golf swing can actually neutralize a strong or a weak grip and it can actually make even a weak grip that you may have at address into a strong club face position at the point of impact. So using wrist angles effectively can be a very valuable weapon if you're trying to get the ball traveling to where you want it to go. So what do we mean when we talk about wrist angles and when we talk about what the differences are? Now, generally speaking, if you take a nice neutral grip, so this two and a half knuckle position on your left hand with the V pointing up towards your right shoulder, and then you have your right hand just sitting on top with the lifeline on top of the left thumb, and as that right hand slots into position here with that V pointing up towards your right chest, your wrist angles as you take it up to the top of your swing really wouldn't have to change too much. When you take it up to the top of the swing and that club face is matching the back of the left wrist and the back of the left arm at the top of the goal swing, what that will generally show is at the top of your goal swing, that club face position is neutral. However, if you start to bow that wrist, and what that means is the wrist moves in this direction, so very much a Dustin Johnson type of position or a John Rahm position at the top of the goal swing, that club face in relation to your target line will now be closed. It will also be de-lofted. In the other direction, a cupped position like this will open up the club face and start to add loft throughout the golf swing. So grip positions can be very, very useful for people who may not have perfect grips, but then adapt their swing to match. Jordan Spieth's a very good example of someone who grips it relatively weakly. However, his wrist position at the top with a slight bow and at impact with a slight bow, strengthen the club face up to a point where he can play some very, very good golf. So I've pulled the 18th up here at Carnoustie. I've left myself 170 yards out, so I'm gonna be using a seven iron for this shot. And what I'm going to do is I'm gonna use some different wrist angles, record some different data, and show you the differences. Now the first ones I'm gonna be hitting are with a bowed wrist position. Then I'm gonna be switching more up to a cupped position. And what I'm going to try and do is keep these positions at the top of my swing, but also try and maintain them a little bit at the point of impact to see what the differences are. And the last shot that I'm gonna play here, just before we look at how those wrist angles affected ball fly and what happened at impact, is do a bit of a specialized shot. Now you'll notice that John Rahm, Dustin Johnson, have this bowing of the wrist as they get to the top, which by the way, these wrist positions have a much fancy name, so flexion and all the rest of it, but I'm just using more common terminology here. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go from a bowed position at the top of my goal swing, so getting my wrist into a position like this, and then as I move through impact, I am going to unbow and actually move it into a much more neutral position. Now what this does is it adds a lever into the swing, so it adds a little bit more speed whilst also squaring a little bit of the club face. Now just see what happens here when I change from a bowed position into a more neutral position as I move through the point of impact. Yeah, I am literally switching to playing like that. So I've pulled up the averages of those three shots now, and <laughs> well, the cup twist certainly wasn't the best thing I've ever done in my life. Um, I found that exceptionally hard to control, actually getting that position there and then that position at impact. And in general, that is a rarity. You see that movement coming through impact, but you very rarely see people keep that cup position into impact. However, it will show some illuminating things as we go in. Now you'll just notice here that on that last shot, so the title, the bow and the flip, so going from a bow to that type of release coming through impact. 
my ball speed, my launch angle, my backspin, my carry, and my total distance were all very good and very high. Now there's a reason for that. As I was coming through impact, that movement to more of a neutral position, actually getting the wrist working in that way from a bowed position, added in a lever to the swing, squared the club face up, and got my impact speed higher than it was with the other shots. The bowed position still managed to get the same total distance, but dispersion wise was nowhere near as good because as I came into impact, that bowed position was closing club face and de-lofting the club. In the cupped positions, the one that went off to the right hand side, that was adding loft and it was also pointing the club off to the right. So I pulled up some of the data from those shots there and you will see some of the differences as they start to appear. First of all, what we'll do is we'll compare the bowed wrist to the cupped wrist. Now you'll notice here how I've had to really struggle to get the ball on target when I have the cupped wrist. The big difference here is the point of impact, just how open my club face was in relation to my path. Now my path was still slightly into out, so what I'm trying to do with my normal swing, but that cupped wrist position really did start to skew and mess up where my club face was, hence the weak right shot. Now when we go onto the bowed wrist, you'll notice how much more the club face was closed in relation to my path, and also from the ball, and the, from the ball flies that you saw went low and left. That's because of the, the actual bowed position as I came into impact. But with the bow and the flip, the title, um, as I come through from in to out with the club face still closed, but actually releasing in this manner to square up and to get a little bit more in line with what I want to do with impact, you can see just how much the ball flight was benefited. And that's why you see players like John Rahm, like Dustin Johnson, actually be able to hit successful shots from that bowed wrist position, because as they come through, that is releasing outwards towards the ball and the target. So hopefully that's give you a little bit more of an explanation as to what happens with cupped and bowed wrists throughout the swing, why often maybe having a slightly odd grip can work if you use your wrist angles properly, and how you can use these in conjunction with each other to hit some really good golf shots. So guys, thank you so, so much for watching. Please subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. Please comment in the box below, like the video and share it around, and follow me on my other social media, which is all linked in the description below. All right guys, thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.